Welcome to the Ottawa Business Journal's YouTube live broadcast of Collaboration in a Hybrid Office, a return to work checklist for employers. I'm Mike Curran from the Ottawa Business Journal. Thanks for joining us today on this beautiful spring day. Uh, there's also some good news besides the weather, and that is vaccination rates. Vaccination rates, in fact, today hit 40%. So 40% of Canadians have received their first vaccination. I got mine just this morning, so I'm happy about that. And uh, all that means there is hope that uh, we might be returning to the office, uh, let's say in the fall or sometime, certainly in the not too distant future. Uh, but it's unlikely to mean that we're returning to status quo offices. And here's what I mean by that. Public health officials might be likely to request half capacity in our offices, and some employees might also want to continue to work from home some of the time or all of the time. All of that means a changing approach to our office, and that really is what today's show is about. Let's just give some examples to that. Uh, return to the office could mean you need systems for employees to book shared desks and meeting rooms. Uh, that could mean you need air purifiers in your office space. That could mean virtual meeting systems to allow for easy and touchless meetings where some of the recipients are face-to-face -face and some of the recipients are at uh, diverse location dispersed uh, you know, across the city or are even farther afield. So a return to the office is going to be a little bit complicated, but rest assured, we're here to talk to you today about some of the issues related to return to the office and some of the technology solutions that you can embrace. Uh, before we get into the show any, any further, I wanna introduce uh, Peter Cavesi, my colleague at the Ottawa Business Journal. Hello, Peter. Hi, Mike. Thanks for being here today. So you're gonna help out again today. Give us a sense of what role you're playing. Well, two things. So prior to today's webinar, we did some advanced polling of all of our registrants to uh, get a bit of a uh, bit a bit of a bit of a sense as to uh, how they're uh, thinking about the uh, the return to work. I'll also be moderating some of the questions that our uh, live audience uh, has on their minds. So I'm encouraging everyone to uh, to go to the little chat window uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, just to the side of the video. Share the questions that are on on your mind, and I'll be posing those to uh, to our guests at the end of the broadcast. Thanks, Peter. We'll see you in uh, just a bit at the end of our, our first topic. All right, it's time to meet our special guest today. Uh, he comes from a company that we talked to just a few weeks ago called Interactive Audiovisual. Let's take a, a look at this short video just to bring you up to speed on the company and what it does. Interactive Audiovisual makes business communication easy and productive by providing turnkey video conferencing solutions, installation, and training helping you upgrade your virtual meeting experience. As you can see from that quick video, uh, you know, they're experts in this field. And now let's talk to one of those experts at Interactive Audiovisual. Please welcome Brent Risky. Hey, Brent. Hey, Michael, how are you? Good. I like the risky is in risky business, you joke <laughs> sometimes, right? Yeah, I, don't, I never get that joke at all. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, uh, Brent, uh, I wasn't exa exaggerating when I said you are truly an expert in this. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Interactive Audio Visual. Sure, I, I'm the sales manager at Interactive and I manage the sales team based here in Ottawa. I've been in the AV or electronics industry now for over 25 years um, and the last five or so years on the, on the AV integration side uh, here in Ottawa. Over 20 years at Sony, was it correct? Right. Yep. Yep. And were several different positions there on the IT side, consumer electronics, and on the pro AV side as well. So a, a bit of a, a wide breadth of different uh, business channels that I worked in. Yeah. I, and I, you know, I think that diversity is going to serve you well in this somewhat uncertain time yeah. period. Before we get to our first topic, Brent, I just wanted maybe to ask you a question to set a bit of context. So, you know, when I'm thinking about the changes we're about to experience, uh, as we return to the office, potentially embrace new systems, new technology solutions. Is it fair to say that the change we're going to experience in, let's say, the next 12 months and beyond is going to be more potentially significant than anything you've seen in your career? I agree. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think we, we went through a change already a year, uh, just over a year ago in, in last March. When all of a sudden, uh, you know, overnight, everybody went to a remote work environment or not everybody, but most people. Um, and that, that was a huge shift in, in how we do business and, and technology that followed that. And now I think we're going to have another huge shift as we move back into some, some type of structured uh, work in the office environment, which I'm actually looking forward to. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, the change isn't over. And uh, we, we all kind of very quickly embraced virtual meetings. And that was the topic of our first uh, session with uh, interactive audio visual. And now we're, we're going to start imagining what, you know, bringing your workforce back in. So sure. uh, Brent, I'm going to put you on hold for a second and, and give our uh, viewers and listeners a sense of our three topics. We often organize these shows into kind of three concrete takeaways. So our topic number one is getting back into the workspace. So it's how to access that workspace. Topic number two is working within that space. And topic number three is in fact, monitoring and evaluating the space. And of course, we'll end up with uh, questions from our live audience. So Brent, let's kick off and get into question, uh, excuse me, topic number one, which is getting back to the office. So yeah. for everyone watching or listening today, imagine that you know, you're still in a remote setting. I'm, I'm here working from home. And at some point, uh, let's say it's in the fall or beyond, you're gonna say to people, start coming back to the office. <laughs> And that's that brings me to the first question. So there's you know widespread expectations, Brent, that offices will be operating at partial capacity uh, when employees start to return. So the the obvious question, Brent, is how can uh, employers manage that capacity? Well, it, there's several ways of doing it, and um, there's some platforms that are available now, and we we represent one from a company called Spacity. Uh, where both the employee and the employer have some control over their uh, their personal safety and their workspace. Um, it's an app-based platform that allows the uh, the employee to book a workstation or reserve a workstation uh, from home either that morning or the night before when they decide they're going to go into the office. And of course, the employer then can set parameters on how many workstations they want to make available to minimize or maximize the, the, the amount of employees they allow in the office at any given time based on the on the protocols that are in place regarding COVID. So let's say you're running at 25% capacity, you can then make available 25% of your workstations uh, for your employees to reserve. And that way you don't have employees showing up at the office uh, looking to work and find out once they get there that there's no space for them to turn around and have to head back home again. So it's it can be inefficient. Um, and, and this was actually starting before COVID. The hybrid work environment, I think, was, was slowly becoming more popular. And I know some people that work in that environment and these, that's where these technologies were starting to develop. And then they've, they kind of hit a, uh, a full speed ahead once COVID hit and these, these platforms became much more popular. And I think in the next six to 12 months, they're really going to become part of our, our day-to-day -day work habits where we can reserve workstations, we can reserve meeting spaces. Uh, the employers, and like I said, can manage the number of people they have in the building at any one time without having to go through clumsy employee scheduling, which can changes all the time. Uh, you can also, uh, manage the analytics of it, et cetera. It's, it, it's really a neat tool that I think will become a, a, a big part of the workforce, especially for mid-sized to larger organizations that have you know, a significant number of employees and really have no way of managing or reserving those, uh, those workspaces. You can also schedule the cleaning of the stations as well through that same platform, reserve parking spaces, um, room sensing. There's, there's tons of stuff you can do. It's pretty cool. That's, that's really cool. And we're going to talk about room analytics. I yeah, think it's, exactly. it ties in there in just a second. So if we stay in this mode of, you know, imagining people are coming back to the office. So you just talked about, you know, reserving a parking spot, yep. reserving a desk, reserving a meeting room. The other thing before anyone accesses the building that we're going to need to think about is, is safety. Sure. Um, so tell us about what tools interactive audiovisual is using to help uh, control access from a safety perspective? There's a, a wide breadth now of temperature sensing products on the market, uh, including kiosks uh, with uh, LCD displays built into them and a temperature device to monitor employees and visitors to the office, whether they have a, a high temperature or not. Um, you know, I think a lot of places now just use the, uh, the old fashioned uh, laser gun that you can buy at a drugstore or from uh, online. But I think a, a more robust uh, platform for, again, larger offices uh, may be in order where when the visitor comes into the reception area, uh, instead of having a receptionist at risk at that time and exposed to those people, you have an automated system, including a temperature kiosk that, that monitors their temperature um, and also can check even to see if they're wearing a mask or not and mm -hmm. alert them, that, you know, remind them that they need to put a mask on to be in your facility. Neat. So there's some things you can do with that. Also, beyond the temperature screening, uh, digital signage and wayfinding, which we, you know, we're all familiar with when you go to a shopping mall or what have you, or even in a restaurant. Uh, but these can also provide uh, safety alerts. Uh, again, protocols with regards to COVID. 
um, areas that could be restricted now because of COVID or areas where uh, PPE is required and areas where maybe it's not. So, you know, to control, you know, people flow through the building as well uh, to provide safety for the employees and the visitors. That's and cool. to protect the employer as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we, we've talked to some employment lawyers and there are some uh, some legal risks, right? I mean, you, you need to be doing this for first and foremost for the betterment of your employees, but also keep in mind, uh, you know, your liability as an employer. That's a that's a great start, uh, Brent, to the show. I'm going to bring Peter Cavesi back on screen now. And as uh, indicated, Peter was conducting some advanced polls of today's audience. Peter, tell us about our first poll. So for our first poll question, now we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the uh, the topic that, uh, that that we were just talking about. So we asked advanced uh, registrants uh, about what proportion of their workforce they thought was uh, going to be uh, working in the office uh, this this fall. What I found particularly fascinating is just uh, everyone's talking about the hybrid workforce, that, uh, that there's very few, virtually no people on either extremes, either totally from home or totally uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the office. Uh, Brent, let's uh, get, get your, your thoughts on, on this. What are some of the challenges facing employers in managing a, uh, a hybrid workforce? It, it, well, one of the challenges you have is how do you communicate with them? Um, you know, before COVID, you know, if you had people communicating remotely, uh, it's usually connecting from one, maybe one meeting space in one office to another meeting space in another office as two groups. Uh, and then COVID hits and everybody's working from home and overnight everybody's using Microsoft Teams or Zoom or other platforms that are out there to, to communicate. Um, as we start moving back into the office space, um, we're going to have, again, back to the, I'm, I'm, I'll probably use this term a lot, but the hybrid workforce is you'll have people in the office space using meeting spaces, but still have people connecting remotely. So one of the challenges we'll have is, or, or employers will have is, the, their existing meeting space infrastructure that they have, how do they then convert that or, or transition it so they can also uh, include the people working remotely in their meetings. And so that we're going to see a bit of a technology uh, change when it comes to that. And how do we incorporate these, you know, had collaboration platforms such as Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams into the, the workplace environment for group meetings. Um, it's one thing for us all to get together on a Zoom call or a Teams call from our own homes, but how do you have a, a meet, meeting room with, with say six people in a room, then connect to a uh, four, say four remote based employees. And that can be a challenge for a lot of employers. How do I, you know, I've invested a lot of money in my existing conferencing technology, but it doesn't work with, with the, the collaboration platform that we've adopted in the last 12 months. So we can help them to, to uh, migrate into that kind of uh, structure that will enable them to do Zoom and Teams calls or WebEx or what have you uh, with their uh, conferencing uh, investment they already have. Those are really good uh, questions that uh, the employer should be uh, should be thinking about uh, heading into the fall. And uh, just a reminder that uh, we do want to hear from our audience about the questions uh, that are on their mind. So please uh, uh, leave a question in the little chat box uh, next to uh, to the video. You do need to be uh, signed in uh, to to YouTube in order to use that chat function. So we encourage you uh, to do that and uh, share what's on your mind. Well, thank you, uh, Peter. And and we're going to go to a uh, topic number two, uh, which is. Uh, as we talked about, is working within the space. And we set that up perfectly with that uh, poll print. So, you know, if I could- I might have stole my own thunder in my last comment, but- No, no, I, you know, I think there's lots more to explore because yeah, sure. I think if I can paint a picture uh, for our audience today. So, you know, you've got some people now in the office and you're gonna have a team meeting. Right now, everyone just is potentially, you know, in their home office clicking, you know, Teams or, or Zoom or something like that to access. But in the future, you might have, three people in a boardroom and you might have a couple of people at home and you might have some clients elsewhere. Sure. Um, you're not going to have, if, if you have no conference um, video capacity right now, you're not going to have those three people, you know, on a little laptop uh, ignoring each other around a boardroom table. Right. 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 Yeah. So I guess help us understand, you know, it, as we look peer into the future here, uh, how that's going to all work, you know, a sure. few people in sure. a boardroom, few people at home, clients in yeah. Europe. Sure. And just take a step back. I think, you know, people may say, well, why are we putting people in a boardroom? Well, I think we've, one thing that I know I've realized, and I think a lot of us realized in the last year or so, is that there is a, a real uh, value to having people together to collaborate in person and face-to-face -face meetings. Um, 
and I think, you know, if, if there are some silver linings to this whole COVID thing, it makes us realize that face-to-face -face interaction and human interaction is a really important part of our, not only our work lives, but our social lives, right? So to have people in a meeting space together, I think is a very important aspect for companies that, you know, want their employees to collaborate together and work together and, and uh, create ideas together. So, you know, that's why you want people in the meeting space. Uh, how do you protect them in the meeting space or how the technology you can use? If you currently don't have, uh, say, AV technology and you want to be able to connect your remote employees, there's some fairly inexpensive and simple ways that you can do it. A lot of companies, have, uh, including uh, Polycom or Poly was a, a partner of ours, have things called soundbars now, which are similar to the soundbar you might have in a home theater system at home. But they also include a microphone and a camera that you wouldn't have, obviously, in a home solution. And, and you can mount that on a wall below a television with an HDMI connection and have a very... Uh, a very simple yet uh, uh, high workable. quality conferencing, yeah. workable, workable and easy to use conferencing solution uh, without blowing a, a huge budget. That's that's really neat. And the next thing I wanted to ask you about, and and let's again paint that picture for uh, for the audience, is I might be in that meeting room. I don't want to necessarily uh, dial in or touch a keypad or a keyboard exactly. or or whatever. So I think there's going to be a lot of people hesitant uh, about touching things, certainly sure, in the first sure. several months after the pandemic. So what can you guys do to make things touchless? Okay. So first thing before we go to touchless is some of the the more ent uh, to entry level, I hate using that term, but some of the, the simpler solutions, you can still bring your laptop in to be, to act as your control system for that conference. Okay. Just like, you, so you'd connect the same way you connect from a, a, a team's call from home, but you would actually then use the speakers, microphones, and the TV that are on the wall as opposed to your laptop. Cool. Got it. The next, the next step is if you have a, let's say a more traditional uh, AV conferencing room, most of those rooms have some type of, uh, of control panel or touch panel, whether it's located on the on the, the meeting room table or on the wall that that you would use to control the room. And you know, most employees are not going to want to be able touching you know more surface than they really need to in any given time. Uh, there are now solutions where you can use a QR code on your telephone to connect to that AV system and then use your own personal mobile device, whether it's a telephone or, or a, a tablet, to control the AV in that room. So then you know it becomes a touchless solution or you can also use voice activation we're all used to using uh hey google or, or alexa yeah. you can actually program your rooms to to run with uh, uh voice activation as well actually our meeting space uh, here in our office uh, runs both we have it set up for both uh, google and alexa to show our customers how it works and uh, the other safety uh, question i was going to ask you about brent is um kind of involving plexiglass so we saw sure. initially in the pandemic particularly if we're going into a retail shop or a medical uh, facility that'd be plexiglass there, we we still might need that use of plexiglass uh, in the office again to provide a heightened sense of security and safety to our employees talk to us about that sure we we, uh, we provide a product called clarity shield by a company called draper and draper is mainly makes uh, projection screens and uh, and uh, automated blinds for windows but they've obviously pivoted a bit and come up with a, a solution that works great for for work stations and for meeting spaces and what i like and it even works in, a, in a, an educational environment they have solutions for for work tables for k-12 to type applications um, and what it is is it's a plexiglass solution that can sit on the table and shield uh, up to four uh, four employees per shield um, you can use multiple shields on a table if you have a larger table in a larger room and it you know it sounds kind of uh, unusual like is that something that's gonna be kind of weird and it might be at first but we all thought wearing masks was really weird too at one point yeah in time. and how fast do we get used to to that and now it becomes complex it's actually it's unusual for somebody not wearing their mask <laughs> so i think we'll start seeing some type of uh protocols go into place and we have solutions that we can help our, our clients with to to protect their employees again when they want to get together and collaborate as a group very neat. I love the point, by the way, you said about why we should have people in meeting rooms because we we do need to play off each other, and you know there is something uh, that's a little bit lacking with with hundred uh, percent virtual uh, meetings as we're embracing now. Brent, we're going to bring uh, Peter back on screen, and he's going to tell us about our second poll. Uh, give us a lowdown on that, uh, Peter. 
So for our second poll question, uh, I have to admit that I wanted to pose something that, uh, that I found fascinating uh, because I've actually throughout the pandemic heard predictions uh, as far as office space that we that organizations will need less space because uh, um, there's going to be a hybrid workforce, fewer people in the office. But at the same time, I've also heard some predictions that actually no organizations are going to need more space because they need to spread uh, spread their employees out. So we pose that uh, to our, uh, our, uh, our, um, our audience who registered uh, in advance. And uh, what uh, what uh, turned out is that, uh, at least among our, uh, our um, registrants, is that it's neither the two extremes, that a lot of people are going to be uh, working within the same uh, same footprint as they did uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, Brent, let's uh, get your insights on this. So if a company is not looking at any dramatic shifts, they're not going to uh, dramatically uh, downsize or, uh, or get additional space, where should the first area be that they scrutinize as they look towards uh, moving back into their uh, existing office? Well, obviously, making you know, it, making sure they have enough space to 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 maximize their workforce without putting anybody at risk, it would be the first thing. But uh, you know, from a measurement standpoint, we, you know, we have tools, and I mentioned it right off the top of Spacity, that that platform where you can book your workstation. It provides analytics uh, to the employer to to analyze how often those workstations are being used, which workstations are being used the most, or or what work areas if you've got common areas or meeting spaces. So you know, let's say you have a, a a dozen different types of meeting spaces in your facility. Is there one type of meeting space that's used way more than another type? And then that allows you to pivot down the road and maybe invest more time and more space to those types of spaces versus ones that are not being used at all. And it also allows you to maximize your, your workstation space for your employees that, you know, this is how many employees are coming in. Uh, this is how often they're here. Uh, these are the workstations that tend to be the most popular and, or, you know, what floor they're on or what have you. So you can analyze the the usage of that office space and workspace uh, many different ways to make sure that you're maximizing your investment in uh, space, furniture, technology. Um, you can also do, uh, we have people counting. So th if there's areas of the, of the uh, common areas of the work office, you can actually have uh, sensors that count the number of people that are in that area at any given time and use those analytics to provide, you know, this is a, you know, people tend to gravitate to this area versus this area. Um, and they, that could be a good thing, but it also could be a warning that we need to make sure that maybe that, that many people are, are gathering at any given time in that area. Uh, so there's a lot, you can also have uh, uh, sensors to, to see how many people are using a, a, a meeting space. You know, th this is a six person meeting room, but on average, only two people are ever using it at a time. So why do we have such a large space for only two people? So there's a lot of different solutions and, and uh, advantages to using a platform like Spacity to not only manage your, the people flow in the building, but also to help you manage your probably your cash flow as far as your investment in the, the real estate and the, 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 like I said, the, the, the furniture and the technology that you use within that real estate. That's, that's interesting. Uh, just, just the other day, Mike and I were trying to, we we're having a debate over uh, prior to the pandemic, just how much our boardroom was used uh, on any given yeah. given weekend. <laughs> and what, what's funny is that we had dramatically different uh, different recollections uh, of, of yeah. that. So definitely, I think some uh, some data would have helped uh, that, uh, that yeah, debate. I, in, in one of my former roles that, that Michael actually mentioned at Sony, we you know, we had a lot of large meeting rooms and I remember going to this room that would hold 20 people and there's four of us sitting at the end of this giant table having a meeting and that's what the most of them were. So a total, a total waste of real, a very valuable real estate, right? Yeah. Just before I turn it back over to uh, to Mike, just a reminder to our audience, please share the questions uh, that are on uh, your mind. We'll be posing those uh, to, uh, to Brent uh, just towards the end of the broadcast. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Peter. And we're going to move to our our third and final topic before we go to our interactive component of today's broadcast. And we've 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 referenced it many times already, Brent. And uh, just to set this up a little bit, you know, I I think as we have limited uh, capacity in our offices and we're sharing desks or meeting rooms, there's going to be a massive amount of change in uh, in offices. And of course, offices and real estate investments are a really big part of uh, of any company's budget so uh what's coming in the months and years to come i think will be you know a very different way of perceiving how much value we're extract extracting back from that real estate sure. so you, you touched on analytics a little bit um and, and the, the concept of of kind of measuring the space let's dig a little bit further into that Brett. how could people actually monitor how much space is being used how it's being used and and then make some decisions as to how much space they do need in the future sure so those analytics that you know i, I talked about earlier and i apologize i mean i repeat myself but it you know it 
how many people are, are, you know, you can even track how many employees are actually booking the workstations every day. Yeah. The meeting spaces, how often those meeting spaces being used, how many people are in those spaces on average. Um, are we providing enough space for them to be, is the room big enough that they can distance themselves to feel safe in that space? You can measure the air quality in that room. There's CO2 sensors that you can, you can apply to the space city platform to measure the, the, the CO2 and the CO2 levels. What that does is, the higher the CO2 level, the poorer the uh, air quality is in the room. And it can't control the air quality, but it can tell the employer that, that the air quality in that room is not very good, especially when there's a group of people in there. And you may want to do something to address that issue um, because none of us want to work in an area where there's poor air quality. Let's, uh, and that's basically, by the way, sounds like a very cool tool, it's particularly it's really since cool. it kind of goes 360, right? So it's yeah. it's booking, it's monitoring, it's air quality. You know, you're, you're getting yeah. lots of different functionality from that one system Let's and the analytics that provide, you know, are, you know, where am I spending my money and am I, am I spending it in the right places? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so an investment, I guess, is, you know, uh, underpinning this discussion in sure. a, in a concept like, uh, or a solution like space city could reap some significant rewards. If you yep. find out that, wow, we could scale our space back by 40% and still be just as functional. L Let's talk a little bit more about air quality. Um, many of us are, you know, leasing commercial space. So maybe at first blush, Brent, we'd say, well, I can't control air quality, but in fact, uh, interactive audio visual has some solutions for that, right? Sure. We, we actually have a product called uh, air sniper and it's an in-room uh, air cleaning system that can purify the, 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 the air space in the room, uh, provide a definitely a, a, I think a, a peace of mind for employees and employers that when they walk in the room, that they know that they're not being exposed to, to certain particles in the air that they don't want to be. And it is effective to a certain degree against COVID and other other airborne things that we don't want to be exposed to. Um, and I th you, there are systems that are also able, also uh, that you can integrate into your HVAC system. But what mm. we like about Air Sniper is that you can it, it's in the room. It's a physical presence in the room. Yeah. And I think that that, that seeing that there provides the, the the employees with that, like I said, that that kind of uh, peace of mind that they know it's actually there, or as opposed to it off out of sight somewhere, is it really working? And does it you know is it doing what it's supposed to be doing, or are they just telling us that right? So it's a really neat product that's been developed and and something that we're really excited about. It's such a good point, right? Employees will need that visual cue to say, I am safe in this space, even if there's a Correct. few of my colleagues here Correct. and the machine's turned on and the green light's on. So this, this yeah, must be working. Noise, but, <laughs> and it's not very noisy, but that's the other thing people be worried about. Oh, cool. It's going to make a lot of noise while I'm in a video call and it, it's, they're very quiet. Okay. Uh, listen, Brent, we want to move to our interactive session. So we'll uh, have Peter join us back on screen. Sure. And uh, Peter, uh, give us a sense of what uh, what you have on your mind and what the audience might have on their mind. So one of the uh, the first questions that was was posed is a bit of a different take on uh, the the hybrid uh, hybrid workforce. So um, employees in the office they may not all want to gather together in the boardroom, and uh, they may be just be more comfortable participating in a video meeting while still at their desks. Uh, Brent, I'm wondering, do you have any guidance or uh, thoughts on how employers can prepare uh, um, employees sure. to, uh, to to participate uh, in in virtual meetings from from their desk? Yep, definitely. And actually, someone would circle back to the webinar that, that Ian hosted uh, several weeks ago is the technology that we're using uh, for our home work or work from home uh, setup will also work in this environment. Like if you have people that are connecting at their workstation and, it, and it's in an open area with other employees, you obviously want to make sure that they're using a, a pair of headphones to, to, you know, so that their, their sound is not interfering with other workers and also a good quality headset so that the, the sound quality on both ends of the call is 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 good and does and shields the uh, the outside noise from the other employees that are in the office so it goes both ways not only are you hiding your the audio of the call from your coworkers around you but your co that the audio the, the noise that your coworkers are making is not being picked up at the other end of the call which can be very distracting and very frustrating so uh, good quality microphone headset uh, I, I would think is it, almost mandatory now for, for most em employers, for their employees who use a lot of desktop collaboration. And a good light also helps as well. A, 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 light, a desktop light, you know, it, it, it does make a difference. It, it, it looks better. And if you, if you look better on the call, you feel better with making the call as well. The old saying, if you look good, you feel good. Absolutely. Um, we had another another question uh, that was a, a bit intrigued by um, your reference to QR codes. Can you just elaborate a little bit about uh, the uh, the opportunities to uh, to uh, introduce QR codes uh, into into the office as a way of um, uh, moving towards more touchless uh, technology? 
Sure. So as I, I mentioned, um, a lot of the platforms that we sell and, and I've been selling before COVID, you can, you know, you can control via your own personal device. And I, I think personal devices, it, it's been bringing a personal device to work is something that's going to keep growing and growing, whether it's your phone or a, a tablet product. And, and people are actually migrating out using their tablet as their main computing device. So be able to use that same device to control the technology in the office space. Um, it, it, the, the options are endless, whether it's the AV system in the meeting room, it could be the, the HVAC system, turning the temperature up and down in a, in a, in a certain space in your work area, the, the lighting system. There's any different number of things you can do with QR codes and, 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 and apps with your personal device to operate and, and, and maximize not only your, the technology, but the comfort level in the office space. So that's a, that's a segue to uh, to another question. It's a bit bit of a specific question, but we're wondering in a group meeting uh, setting, uh, um, maybe traditionally you would sort of be passing a microphone from uh, participant to participant. Is there sure. anything that would enable people to do something similar, but with their mobile phones? Is there any role for uh, their, their own mobile technology in that sort of setting? I would have to look into that. I honestly don't know. Uh, that's a great question, but you'd also then have to make sure that the phone's incorporated into the call somehow. And that creates challenges with uh, with feedback because your microphone's picking up the audio in the room, and, and and vice versa. So it could create some some challenges. I would I would not be shocked that we you know six months down the road there is a technology out there, or there is an app out there that en enables you to do that. Um, what we do provide for in, in meeting spaces. Um, a lot of microphone technology that uh, no matter where you are in the room, we, you know, we have these uh, array mics that go in the ceiling and uh, in, in one of the ceiling tiles, uh, you don't even notice it's there and it picks up the audio in the entire room, crystal clear. It, 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 the, the microphone technology has advanced so much in the last five years in our industry um, that it's made our, our video collaboration and our video calls so much more productive and more, more pleasant to be part of because audio is the most important part of the call, not the video. Right. Um, so certainly a lot of the, um, the the technology that we've talked about today is scalable, whether or not you're a, a small business or a very lar large enterprise. We had a question from our audience, though, uh, um, an, uh, sorry, an audience member, specifically asking, what advice would you have for an organization in a relatively small space with people coming and going all the time? Paint us a bit of a picture about sort of the ideal setup for a, a small sure, space a small, with the yeah, high traffic. Well, yeah, so we, we have a small space ourselves, and, and obviously a small organization is not going to, uh, you know, may not have the means to invest in a, in a very high-end uh, solution to manage their, their workspace, but there are there are licenses from Space City that, would, that do work for smaller organizations as well. So, you, you know, you don't, it, it's not just a, an enterprise-type solution. It, it does work for smaller organizations. Because um, I think it's it's important to come up with a platform like that. You know, I've, I've, you know, back before we were in the lockdown and I was scheduling my staff, you know, certain people in at certain times and it's done kind of the old fashioned way with the calendar, you know, electronic calendar, but there's always variables to it. Somebody can't come in that day. Somebody wants to come in that day, needs to come in, what have you. Having it done in a, in a platform that's almost automated, I think is, it's just, it becomes stress-free for the employer. Um, and so there are solutions available even for smaller businesses to manage their, their space and to also provide safety for their employees when they're there. Uh, some of the, some of the, like most of the shields, for example, for the meeting spaces and the workstations are sub $500 MSRP. So they're not, they're not crazy expensive. We actually have shields up for our, uh, I have, we have low rise cubicles and what we call the bullpen of the sales area here. And we've actually uh, installed uh, clear shields above the workstations in a, in a, in a four way grid. So it, it doesn't block, you know, it still gives you that open concept feeling but provides a, a, an extra added level of security for our employees when they're in the office or when they get back to the office eventually, which I can't wait. So, And uh, one more uh, follow-up question from uh, something that you had mentioned. What is your recommendation for a desk booking uh, platform? Obviously, Space would be the one that, that's the one that we're, we're uh, really happy about and, and think is a, a top, but there's lots of them out there and you know, spend a little time you know, researching on, on online. Give us a call as well. You know, uh, we're going to provide my contact info at the end and we can guide you through if space is not the solution for you. There are other options that we have available as well. And we're more than happy to sit down and talk to you, whether it's on a, on a call or, you know, when we get out of the, the lockdown, come and actually see your site, you know, obviously observing all protocols, but sometimes we just, we, need to be on site to give you a full evaluation of what would be the best tools for, for that, that client to, to utilize in their, in their space. Great. Mike, back over to you. 
Wow, Brent, uh, that was so good. You know, what I love about uh, speaking about uh, interactive audio visual is that we're dealing with the why, you know, kind of the principles of this, but we're also getting down to the specific solutions and and benefiting, uh, Brent, in, in your case, from 25 years of experience. That's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, as, uh, as we wrap up here, Brent, I'm going to ask uh, our, our producer to bring on your contact information just so people know how they can reach out to you. You seem like a very friendly, friendly man. We can do that. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Brent Risky, the sales manager, and we've got an uh, uh, email address and a phone number. Um, Brent, you know, just as a final thought, um, I would imagine your recommendation is not to wait on some of this stuff, right? Like this summer's going to pass yeah, quickly. A, Michael, that's a great point. Is as we saw during the when COVID uh, first kicked in in, in last March, uh, for the first six months, you could not buy a webcam or a good quality set a headset uh, anywhere because the, the demand was so high. And we're also and we're also starting to see shortages on on a lot of electronic product. Um, due to component shortages in Asia, uh, semiconductors, et cetera, not just for, for electronics, but cars, everything. Um, a coworker of mine ordered a car and they're having to wait months now just because there's shortages on components coming out of Asia. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing. And then there's also going to be demand on the product, a much higher demand on a lot of the AV product that clients are going to require to, to create that hybrid meeting environment um, to connect their remote employees to their, their, uh, employees based in the physical office. So yes, there definitely will be a, a demand and we, we, we foresee a huge surge in, 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 in this area come September, October. Great, great job. And, and a very strong recommendation, you know, send Brent an email, send him a phone call. Maybe they'll come sure. check out your office and, and get this process underway before it's too late. And you've got to wait months and months. That's sure. uh that would, that would be, you know, truly unfortunate. Well, yeah. thanks. If you missed my contact. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm also on LinkedIn as well. You can ping me on LinkedIn if you missed yeah. it as well. So. It's awesome. Thanks Brent. Great job today. Thanks, Michael. thanks for joining us. We'll hope to see you and your uh, colleagues at interactive audio visual real soon. Uh, as I sign off, I want to remind uh, everyone that they can visit obj.ca website uh, every weekday for updates on local business news. I highly recommend that you subscribe to OBJ today. It's our Monday to Friday email newsletter. It basically gives you a, a full summary of the day in business as it pertains to uh, Ottawa. You can, of course, uh, follow uh, OBJ on social media. LinkedIn tends to be a very popular platform today. I think we're just below 22,000 followers. And for those of you on YouTube, just a reminder to hit the red subscribe button and the like and the bell icon. And if you do all that, you'll know that when we're when we're live on screen here. So that's all the time we have uh, for today. Thank you very much to our friends at Interactive Audio Visual, my colleague, Peter Cavessi. Uh, please stay well. Hope to see you real soon. Bye-bye.